So for the fiction books and even for like some nonfiction books, like the story based, it's not just reading content on the uh, paper. It's about understanding what that content means and understanding the characters. Is there a lot of research that you do in advance or do you just read the or listen to the audiobook first and then you know what to say later? Well, the uh, you read the book first, obviously. That is critical. And I take notes because I want to know if the character has a, has a Boston accent or the character has an Irish accent uh, or it's a cowboy or, you know, what, what uh, type of voice it's going to be for each character. Are they, are they German and they talk like this up here? Are they Russian and they talk like this down here? You have to do your research. And as I get uh, prepared to do a book, I will record uh, pieces of each voice so that I know um, when they show up in chapter two and then again on chapter in chapter 38 that I have the same voice. And, um, you know, there are some tricks that, that you can use, um, you know, kind of same voices. Um, the uh, uh, one common voice I have uh, that I use almost every book is, is my, what I call my wizard voice, where um, it, it's based on Harry Potter. When you go into the wand store and, you know, Harry, so good to see you. You know, I sold your parents their wands. And I've been able to use that voice, for instance, in a children's book. Once upon a time, there was a fairy who had but one tooth. And I've also used the same voice and kind of twisted it for a horror story I did called The Incurables, where it was... I'm Dr. Walter Freeman, and I perform lobotomies. Don't worry, I use a hammer and ice pick, but there's hardly any pain at all. So <laughs> you should basically come up with you know voices you can use in a variety of situations. 